Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we're going to talk about playing guitar standing up. Something that I get asked about all of the time, like how to do the transition and what's difficult and how can you make it a bit easier and that kind of thing. To start off with, I want to talk about what makes it so different when you stand up and then I'm going to take you through a bunch of tips to help you solve all of those problems. And the first one, become very obvious, first time you try and stand up play guitar, is the neck's all wobbly. When you sit down, it's kind of resting on your leg there and you've got your arm kind of resting on the guitar there. Sure, you've got a strap, but it, it, the neck is definitely going to feel a lot more loose when you stand up for the first time. And that can be a kind of a good thing, but it's also could be a bit, little bit disconcerting. The other thing that's weird is the angle of the neck compared to your eyes. So a lot of people, particularly beginners, they tend to kind of have the guitar leaned over a bit when they're sitting down there. They're looking at their fingers a bit more and you can't do that when you're standing up without, I mean, if you can kind of press it in like that, but it, it becomes really awkward and you're craning your neck and it'll look, aside from kind of looking weird, it, it's just, it's not bad, very good form really. It, you crank the neck around like that, it's going to screw the, the angle of your wrist up. There's lots of reasons why that's a bad idea. It'll force you to become more reliant on the side of the neck markers rather than the front. So if you're used to looking at the third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret markers on the front, when you're standing up, you won't be able to do that so much. You will be more reliant on the top. It is quite a different perspective, really, and it's something that you'll probably find takes a little bit of practice. Like, again, everything else on guitar, it's a little bit about doing it here. I'm just trying to give you as many tips as I can to get you going. Now, the other thing that changes a bit is the way your thumb sits. So when it sits around the back a lot, if you're standing up and the, the guitar's at a different angle, it will feel different. For most people, it feels a bit more comfortable to have the thumb hanging around over the top. And I I'm kind of wonder if most of the people that play standing up most of the time tend to develop with the thumb over the top more than people who learn a lot more sitting down. Um, I found putting the thumb over the top quite difficult on my journey, even though I did was gigging from quite a young age and doing a lot of playing standing up in order to practice it. But that's, again, that's something that you, you'll definitely notice. There's also the different, not just in the guitar, but in the way you move will be different as well. So um, just tapping your foot, if you, especially tapping your toe feels really awkward when you're standing up. It'll make the, the muscle in your shin feel pretty tight. If you stamp your foot, you'll probably find that your body moves more. I tend to kind of step side to side when I play. I have this kind of like a sway going on, which is kind of my way of tapping the foot and keeping my, my body moving in time. Um, I mean, there are a few guys that kind of dance, dance while they play. That doesn't kind of work for me, but it's one of those things that's going to feel different as soon as you start. You don't want to be super rigid and playing because it'll, it'll look weird and it'll feel weird. It won't feel relaxed. You want it to feel loose and cool. That's that stuff, you know, the, the importance of it feeling good to you, you know, can't be underestimated. It's really, really important that you feel that. So let's get into my top 10 tips for learning to play guitar standing up. And the first one, I'm making myself out to be a complete hypocrite here, is to get strap locks. Now, I already mentioned that uh, this isn't the strap that I usually use. All of my straps, except this one, have strap locks fitted on them. Um, there are a few different brands. The Shala ones are really good. The Adario make one. Uh, but basically, you want something on there so that it, it will not fall off. You can also use Grolsch little red, the little red seals off bottles of Grolsch beer. That way you get a free beer with the strap locks, which is definitely a top bargain. I've got a video all about this as well, a specific video, but definitely you want something there so that the strap doesn't fall off. It is as simple as if you've sat down, if your strap's loose and your strap turns around the wrong way, so it's kind of upside down, and then you stand up and you've got a heavy guitar, it's that simple and the guitar's on the floor. You've got yourself at like a, a Les Paul or something like that, you're going to have yourself a really, really unfun time with a broken headstock and going to the guitar store and asking them to fix it. So I would definitely, definitely recommend getting strap locks first. You can see then just how easy that one that fell off then. And it really, I didn't have to press it very hard either. It would just be the weight of the guitar that would make that fall off. So get yourself strap locks. That's a really good idea. Make sure your strap is secure. And while I'm on it, your cable should be secured too. So this is another thing just to, you know, you don't have to do it, but it can save a lot of embarrassment. You take your strap, you pass it up the back of the strap there, and then put it into your hole there. So that way, if you accidentally tread on the cable and pull it up, it's not going to pull the, the socket out, which is, I've, I've done it in front of people, very embarrassing when you tread on it, the, 
lead just goes out and there's no volume from the guitar you know not a great way to start a solo so worry about that so strap height that's something that everybody worries about and it's one of those things that's very personal i'm going to tell you how i do it but that doesn't mean that you should do it the same way but i'd recommend it as a good starting point and for me i set the strap so it's the same height as when i'm sitting down when i'm sitting up straight sitting down so i've enlisted my old friend the aer amplifier here because my regular chair didn't fit but the way i've set the the height of this strap is the way that i set my usual straps and it is like one finger distance between the bottom of the guitar and my leg and the reason for that is because it helps me sit up straight okay i'm, I'm prone like everyone else of kind of round shoulders and sitting like that with a bad posture when i've got that gap there if i've got my strap on when i'm practicing it means that the guitar is lifted up and it's like a little cute oh hang on i've got to sit up straight so you might want to do that particularly if you've got you know posture issues or a bad back then that would be a good way of helping ensure that you sit up straight now that's what works for me but that isn't what works for everybody and i'm not saying that that is what you should do what i think you should do is experiment a bit and see what feels comfortable for you you might put the guitar right up here like the beatles with a really really short strap and be like oh wow this feels great i could i'm closer to it all and i'm not sure why you would want to play like that but people do and that's okay because it's for you to find what feels comfortable for you not what i tell you you should do i'm recommending that you find the strap height that's comfortable for you now if that means and again like th this really really doesn't work for me if you want to be you know uh, mr hetfield or you know one of these guys that plays like super super low like that or even that guy from Meta the bass player from metallica whose name i'm forgetting now but like playing it right down there like the wrist angle is just if you're going to put the thumb at the back of the neck it's like it's killing you so you're gonna have to play a little bit more rappy but that kind of works all right there like if i'm playing it that way it doesn't feel that uncomfortable i couldn't do a gig like it i just couldn't no matter i think it looks pretty cool you know if you're playing in a rock band and you having a low guitar there is a pretty hip look but the, if you want to do it if you play like that and you're like i really want that look that's really important to me then the important thing is that you practice that way Okay, because it's no good practicing sitting down with a guitar at this height and then expecting to go out to a gig and put the guitar really low and for it to feel the same because everything will feel different. The motions that you make with your picking hand, the way your arm moves, the way the fretting hand is, the position of your thumb, all of that is going to change. And there's nothing wrong with it. You just have to make sure you practice that way. So when you're doing your daily practice, you shouldn't be doing it sitting down if you want to have that strap really low there. You want to have... The, the strap set at the height that you want. Now, I already touched on this already, but just to be super clear here, the important thing is not how high the strap is, it's that you practice with the guitar at the same height as you intend to play when you're standing up. Okay, that's the important thing. I made a decision earlier on that I wanted to sit down because I was doing like long practice days. It didn't feel comfortable to be standing up, although, like I said, I've got a couple of tips on if you do have want to go for the low strap thing coming up. But it's just really important that you make a decision there. Now, that doesn't mean you can't change the decision. You might play with it a little bit higher and go, actually, no, this isn't working for me. I want it a bit lower. That's okay. But just make sure you practice in the way that you want to set your strap. Now, if you're planning to go and do a gig, if you're graduating from kind of beginner home practice and you're actually going to make it out to do a gig, I would recommend doing a few long practice sessions at least as long as the gig itself is. I've met lots of students over the years that do like 15, 20 minutes practice a day and then they go to do a gig which is an hour long or 45 minutes long and they've never actually played for that long before. And particularly standing up, there are different muscles involved that you're going to find in your neck and in your shoulders, in your arms, in your legs. Everything is going to feel different. So what you don't want to be doing is practicing at home, keeping things one way, and then you get to the gig and 15, 20 minutes into the gig, your shoulder's really sore and you've, you've got these other aches. You want to be thinking about your playing and kind of losing yourself in the music, not be worrying about your shoulder really hurting or that kind of thing. That's just not the point. So make sure you put in some practice time, like or if you like a practice gig, great thing to be doing would be to play your whole set end to end at home standing up pretending you were at a gig so you're doing all your pedal changes your amp sounds all of that stuff guitar changes if you need to ironing out all of those little problems to make sure that you get that out of the way before you go to a show 
So even though my strap is set at the same height when I sit and stand, the angle of the neck changes a little bit. It's just a little bit more pointing up toward the sky. There it's flat, and I stand up. That feels weird. I want it to be that much more. Now, one of the things that I find a little bit interesting when I was researching for this lesson is that actually, if I put the guitar on the other leg, it's actually a little bit closer to the angle that it would be when I'm standing up. I don't feel like I feel like that's the point. Now, I've never liked practicing like that. It feels weird. I've always preferred practicing like this, and I still recommend to people to practice that way. It feels more comfortable, more natural when I'm sitting. That way definitely has a like a an angle of the neck thing that feels a little bit more like it's standing up, which is making me kind of doubt myself just a little bit. Now, I'm not suggesting that you change to this, and I do still feel like it looks weird. Like, I, I wouldn't want to go to a gig and be playing a folk gig like that. It just feels weird. But it makes sense why, particularly a lot of the real technical players you see playing this way. Because perhaps it means that, you know, when you're going for real precision uh, techniques where there's a lot of fast stuff going on, where it is, yeah, it's technically challenging, then it probably makes a bigger difference when you stand up to make sure that it's exactly in the same place. So... It's something that you should experiment with. I've said quite a few times already, it's a very personal thing, finding the one that feels good for you. We are all an anatomically different. You might have longer arms or weaker shoulders or a frame that particularly suited to one playing style or another. But it's definitely something to experiment with is putting the guitar on the same leg as your fretting hand and seeing if it makes any difference for you when you're sitting down. Now, one thing I should mention as well is to do with the weight of your guitar. You don't, if you're going to do long gigs, you definitely, definitely don't want a heavy guitar. My gold top, which is here, this thing, this weighs a lot. I don't know how much it is. It must be 10 or maybe even more, 15 kilos. Or so. It's really heavy. And when I've gigged with that guitar, I've really, really not enjoyed it, to be honest. So even with a super soft strap, it makes my shoulder hurt. It just feels weird. I, I find it a bit head heavy as well, so it was kind of pulling over a bit. So that wasn't my favorite one. Now, if you're going to be gigging regularly, it's the kind of thing that you want to think about. If you're mainly playing at home, it doesn't matter. I've still got that guitar. I love it dearly. I'm never going to sell it. But as a, a gigging guitar, that one is very unlikely to come out. Aside as well, it's kind of a valuable one and a bit special for me. So Thinking about the guitar that you would use for playing out might mean buying another guitar. Whoa, I bet you'll regret hearing that. So it's a great excuse to buy another guitar if you need one. Finding one that sits really well when you're standing up that's really comfortable, I think is really important. That sort of, it leads on to the next point as well, which is getting a comfortable strap. This strap is pretty decent, actually. I'm surprised. It's just a regular, like a made of canvas Kind of looks funky retro styling thing. Most of the straps that I use are, are quite heavily padded. Um, you know, if I'm standing up for two, three hours or whatever, I want a strap that's really comfortable and they can be remarkably uncomfortable. If you get like a thin nylon strap, they really can dig into your shoulders. So I, I find them a really unpleasant thing to, to wear full stop. So like the big wide leather straps, I think are quite comfortable. Um, Lately, my favorite strap has been made by Mono uh, brand. It's got really, really nice padding and it's quite wide. Generally, the width is the thing that you want to go for. Uh, there's a nice neoprene one I've got as well, but just give it some consideration. Don't just buy the first strap that, because somebody else had one that you liked or whatever. You know, the, go and try some on if you can and see what feels comfortable for your body. Now, I mentioned already this idea of having the thumb over the top, particularly with a low hanging guitar. But I think it's the kind of thing that you want to experiment with anyway. For me, definitely having a thumb over the top when I'm standing up just feels nicer. Like I, even playing in a bar chord like that feels a little bit weird for me now. I, I just would tend to play it like that with a thumb over, which isn't something for beginners, by the way. You should still be working on your regular bar chords through the intermediate stage. But having the thumb sitting around over the top is going to change how it feels. So being aware of that, particularly with your open chords, it's something that we've talked about in this, you know, the lesson 14, the end of grade two, is having the thumb over the top. You almost certainly find it easier to have the thumb over the top there. So experiment, again, see what feels good for you. Be happy that it might evolve. Okay, so it doesn't have to be like, I'm doing it this way forever. You can go, right now, this feels the most comfortable for me. 
I'll revisit it in a few months time or whenever there's a reason to. If I start gigging more or I'm looking at, you know, doing my first gig, then I'm going to revisit how my hand position feels and what I think the best is going to be for that particular type of set that I'm doing. There was a period um, when I was I don't know, 17 years old or something back in Tasmania. I was big into rock and metal, had long hair and everything. You want to see the pictures. Um, and one of the things, because I knew about this, making sure that I practiced the way I wanted to play. So I had a period of using this kneel chair. So it was basically like a, a, a little pad for your knees. So you'd kneel down on that and you'd still have a pad for your bum. But it meant that you could hang your guitar down quite low and still be, you could sit in the same position as you were for standing. Now, that would be overkill if you're only doing an hour's practice. But if you're kind of getting serious about your guitar and you're doing six hours a day or whatever, like long practice sessions, you're going to need to sit for some. I mean, maybe you don't. Maybe you're a superhuman and you can deal with all of that. Like, I would be super tired if, if I just stood up. If I had to stand up practicing for eight hours, I'd be knackered. So um, it's the kind of thing that you might not think of, first of all. But again, the importance of keeping the guitar at the same height as when you're going to go and play is so important that I would, if you need to sit down, I definitely recommend checking out a kneel chair. They're yeah, really good for your back and your general posture too. Even if you don't want to play really low, I'd recommend them. Um, it's not something I use every day, but I have done in the past and they are a pretty cool tool. And the last thing is something I've talked about a few times, but I really want to make a point of it because it's really important. And that is for you to explore this a bit. And don't just go like, oh, Justin said we should sit the same as I'm sitting and standing, blah, blah, blah. Figure it out. Spend some time on your own and experiment. Put it down real low. What does it feel like? Oh, there's no work in a play. Okay, try it really high like the Beatles. Oh, it feels okay, but I look silly. Or, you know, whatever. Figure out what works for you. We are all anatomically different. So it's really important that you find the right position of the strap, the right placement of the neck. Do you put? Do you keep it down flat like that? Do you angle it up a little bit more? So it's these, these straps really weird. It's like... They're leather and it's getting squeaky in case you've noticed that sound. I don't know if the mic will pick that up or not, but I'm finding it like distracting for myself. Anyway, the, the point here is just about the experimenting. And I talk about it, the further you get down the guitar road, the more important it is that you figure out what works for you. We all like different music. We all like different things. And that's great. Otherwise, we'd all like the same band. We'd all play the same songs the same way be really, really boring. So this diversity within the guitar community is really, really important. And that should infect every aspect of your guitar playing life, from choosing a strap to choosing a guitar, the pedals that you use, the amp that you use, the combination of stuff, the way you play, all of that stuff should be considered and thought about and trying to figure out what feels best for you. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. Let me know in the comments if you like it hanging low or if you like it up high. Really appreciate your support if you slap that subscribe button and a like. And I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You'll take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.